Hello! The Fang Muffin channel description does mention kink, but up until now I've not actually covered any BDSM topics, so today we're going to delve into kinky stuff. Consider yourself warned. And also, uh, Mum, if you're watching, you might want to stop. <coughs> BDSM covers a massive swathe of activities and persuasions and experiences, but among other things, I consider myself to be a sadist. And not coincidentally, the tiny cat is a masochist. <laughs> Sadist, in the BDSM sense, means that I hurt people for fun, which is a quite difficult thing to explain to people without coming off as a dangerous psychopath, but I am going to give it a good shot. Importantly, of course, sadist in the kink sense means hurting people in a consensual, negotiated, agreed environment. It means hurting people who want to be hurt, which is obviously what makes the difference between BDSM and the aforementioned dangerous psychopath. Within the protective walls of negotiated, risk-aware consent, responsible adults can choose to mess around with some pretty dark experiences. Everyone who engages in kink is going to have their own take, but for me, the primary emotion, while hurting somebody in a kink environment, is... glee? It doesn't make me horny, it's not a sexual thing. It just turns me into a grinning, maniacally laughing loon, which I am reliably informed is suitably terrifying. The best way I can describe this experience is with that image of, you know, six-year-old boys pulling the wings off flies or getting a magnifying glass to burn ants. There's something compulsive about that cruelty when you are young which you blessedly grow out of. I would however argue that you don't actually grow out of the desire. What you do instead is that you develop empathy and compassion and start understanding that these beings have feelings and therefore that torturing them is wrong and that your consideration for other living things is one of the core points of being a decent human being. BDSM, however, is the king of having your cake and eating it. You get to torture the little helpless creature, but not just without guilt, but with an active positive feedback loop. Rather than what you're doing being in opposition with your empathy for other living creatures, you are actually giving this person something that they want, in some cases something that they need. Basically, you get to pull the wings off the fly and then the fly says thank you. In addition to that experience, there is also something viscerally satisfying about the actual actions, literally leaving your mark on a person. Both sadists and masochists do tend to share this extreme pride in the resulting marks from a play session, albeit having very different involvement in the creation of those marks. And lastly, there is definitely a technical satisfaction. There is a skill, a craft, to pretty much every kinky activity. Doing it safely so as not to cause actual lasting harm is not actually easy and mastering those skills is really satisfying. Now, dominance and sadism often go hand in hand. Right now I'm purely talking about the sadism aspect. But even if you're not in it for control over the person that you're playing with, there is definitely an element of control over yourself and the tools in use. And that, again, just feels really good. For example, this is a five foot long leather wrapped bullwhip. I absolutely love this thing. <laughs> I also owned it and practiced with it for around three years before I ever went anywhere near a person with it. I would say that of all of the kit that I have, this is probably the one that has the most uh, potential risk for doing some serious harm to somebody by mistake. If you swing and hit in the wrong place or too hard or you're too close to somebody or you can really, really harm somebody. Importantly, I never have. That danger, that potential for serious injury, is often actually kind of a large part of it. For many masochists, the tiny cat included, they want to be scared of what's happening. And knowing that the potential for serious harm is there is, feeds into that fear process. This kind of fear into play and this kind of risk is a large part of why trust in the person that you're playing with is such a huge deal when it comes to BDSM. And for me, using those kinds of tools with precision and control is a huge kick. So that's my take. I'm sure every single dominant and sadist out there will have their own perspective and I'd be really interested to hear it to be honest. Till next time, thanks for joining me and I'll speak to you soon.